Hey, how's it going, everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to part two, where I show you guys how to build a habit tracker using React and Node.js. So last week, I finished designing the UI for the habit tracker website that I called Consistency. So as you can see, I finished designing the landing page and the main habit tracker page. So if you haven't checked that video out, I started from just an idea, came up with some sketches, and built the user interface using Adobe, what's it called? Using Adobe XD. So if you want to follow along, it would be a really good exercise if you wanted to learn React and Redux for the front end, as well as Express, Node.js, and Postgres for the back end. So in this specific video, I'll be showing you guys how I started creating the application and also explain some core concepts behind Redux and Redux Toolkit. So by the end of the video, you should have an understanding of what Redux Toolkit is, why it's useful, and how to set up a new clean project with React and Redux Toolkit. We're focusing only on front end. So let's get into it. So I assume that most of the viewers who are watching this uh, kind of know the basics of React. So I'm not going to go too in depth with that. But in a nutshell, React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. And the core idea behind React is componentization. Components are basically uh, JavaScript functions or classes that return HTML. And React components can contain state. But when we want that state to be global and to be shared across multiple components, then we use Redux. So first of all, what is Redux? As I mentioned, it's just a JavaScript library for managing state. Now the store is basically an immutable object tree and it stores the state for different parts of our application. So we're gonna get more into detail in this as we look at the actual code. But to give you a high level overview of how Redux actually works, I wanna show you guys this diagram over here. So if we, if we have a React application and there's some sort of event in the UI that takes place, such as a button click or a form submission or something like that, that requires a state change, Here's what happens. So what happens is the front end calls an action creator. All right, an action creator is simply a function that returns an action. Now you might be wondering what's an action. An action is just a JavaScript object that you can see an example of over here that has a type. That type contains a string that represents what the goal of that action is. So for example, add goal. This action creator, once called from the front end, sends an action to a reducer. Now, remember, an action is just a JavaScript object. So this JavaScript object called an action is sent to the reducers. Now, a reducer simply just takes the current state of the application, takes that action that, it's, that it was called with, and it returns a new state based on that action. So this is basically an overview of how Redux works. Of course, there's more complicated logic to this, such as creating API calls and adding middlewares. But in a nutshell, this is how Redux works with React. So I want to introduce a library called Redux Toolkit. And basically it's a package that standardizes a bunch of Redux logic and addresses a couple different concerns. And I got these directly from the documentations for Redux Toolkit. So for example, configuring a Redux store is too complicated. You have to add a lot of packages to get Redux to do anything useful. And Redux requires too much boilerplate code. I don't know about you guys, but I can definitely relate to a lot of these points. Um, when I've been working with Redux in the past year or so, it's been kind of annoying because you have to have a bunch of different files for reducers, for actions, for action creators, files that hold constant for your actions. And there's just too much boilerplate that you have to write to get started with it. So basically Redux Toolkit abstracts a lot of those functionalities and gives us functions to work with that make it easy to work with the Redux store. Here's the official way to get started with the React Redux Toolkit application. All right, so I'm in my terminal, and as you can see, we have an empty folder here. I want to show you guys from scratch how I've been building this application. So the command we'll use is npx create react app. It's going to create it in the front end folder for us. And we're going to use a template called Redux. So this is going to go ahead and create some of the boilerplate code. And I do want to walk through how React works with Redux Toolkit. Um, with some of the boilerplate code that they give us. And then using that knowledge, I'll go on to show you guys how to create components for our website in future videos. So again, the goal of this video is to introduce what Redux Toolkit is, how it works, some of the basic functions that are part of it, um, and how to clean up the application so that we have a fresh start so we can start creating components for our own website. Now that it's done installing, let's, let's start the website with npm start. Oh. We have to go into the front end folder and then say npm start. Whoops. OK, so this is basically the boilerplate code that Redux toolkit with React gives us. So as you can see here, we have a simple counter. We can add a certain amount 
So before we get into building consistency, I want to show you guys how Redux Toolkit has been used to simplify the process of working with Redux. So let's take a look at the code. So I've opened up my code in Visual Studio Code, and we have the boilerplate code that Create React App gives us. So if we go into our source folder, our React application is going to be starting from the index.js file. I don't want to go into too much detail explaining all the lines of code, but basically our main application is stored in the app component. So inside this app component, the main thing that we're concerned with is this counter component in here. This counter component is what handles this area over here. So if we take a look at how count works, um, when we click the plus button over here, we have an on click function. This on click function dispatches an increment function. If we look at where increment comes from, it comes from this file called counter slice. Now in here, we can see that increment comes from counter slice dot actions. Well, what is counter slice? This brings me to one of the main functions from Redux Toolkit that I want to talk about. So if you look at the description here, create slice is a function that accepts an initial state, an object full of reducer functions, and a slice name, and automatically generates action creators and action types that correspond to the reducers and state. That's quite a mouthful, so I want to break it down a little bit and make it simple for you guys. So going back to the slides that I made, create slice. So first of all, let's talk about what create slice does. So what it does is handle a slice of the application state. So when we're, when we're calling create slice, here's the parameters that we're giving it. So first of all, we give it a name, and this name represents what state that we want to keep track of. So in our code, we're keeping track of counter. We give it an initial state, which in our example starts off as a value of zero. And then the third parameter we give it is reducers. Now these do come in the form of an object where the first thing is a string and the second thing is a reducer function. So as you can see here, for our reducers parameter of our create slice, we have an object and each key of this object represents the name of the reducer and the value is a reducer function, okay? Now we can also have extra reducers and I'll be showing you guys how to work with extra reducers in future videos when we're making API calls and working with asynchronous data. So for now, all you need to know is that we can give, we can give the slice a name, an initial state, and, a, and an object that contains a bunch of reducers. Okay, well, all this is great, but, but what does this create slice function actually return for us? So let's talk about that. So create slice will return an object that looks like this, simply put. It's gonna, it's gonna return the name, the reducer, along with the reducer functions, an actions field that's gonna be mapped to an object that has a string and an action creator, and some case reducers. Let's console log the value of counter slice. So this is an object whose keys represent the names of the the names of the reducers that we gave over here, right? Increment, decrement, and increment by amount. And they're mapped to functions. These functions are just action creators. It's gonna return for us an action. And as I explained in the slides, an action is just a JavaScript object that contains a type. So again, why is create slice useful? Because originally when you're working with Redux, you'd have a separate place where you have your reducer functions and you'd have a separate file for action creators. You'd have to actually write your action creators. You have to specify constants for uh, action type strings. So the nice thing with create slice is that it handles all that for us. It creates these action creator functions for us and it uses the names that we gave for the reducers as the action type. All right, so if that explanation didn't make sense to you and you may have not used Redux in the past, here's a summary of what you need to know. So again, when we press this plus button over here, we dispatch this action, increment. Increment comes from counter slice, and we can see that we're destructuring increment from counter slice dot actions. Okay, so increment is an action that comes from counter slice. When we call this increment function, it's gonna return an object whose type is going to be counter slash increment. To make that even more obvious, let me also just console log. So as you can see here, we called increment, and all it is is an action that whose type is counter slash increment. Now, remember in the slides when I was talking about how Redux works, once our React application calls the action creator, the action creator returns the action, and the action is then sent to the reducers. So in our code, when this dispatch function is called with the result of calling our increment action creator, we then go to our reducers. And our reducers, remember, are responsible for taking in a state and an action and returning a new state based on that action. So when that increment action is dispatched to our store, this increment reducer is then called to handle that action. 
And what this does, it just increases the value of the state by one. So this is a very simple example of how our React application uses Redux to update the state of the store and update the user interface as a result of that. So essentially, this is how we're going to be keeping track of the local state of our app. Let's just clean up some of the boilerplate code that comes from create react app. So in the app.js file, I'm going to remove all of this stuff. Instead, I'm just going to leave an empty div. We're going to remove the logo. We're going to remove counter. We can also go into app.css and, and we can actually just remove all this stuff as well. And inside of our index.css file, for now, we're just going to remove this code. Uh, we're going to be changing up a lot of the CSS that's part of the body, but I'll start building the site and styling it in the next video. For now, I just want to clean up some of the stuff that we don't really need. It's up to you guys if you want to keep this example of counter slice here. I'll be making some different slice files from scratch, so you can delete these ones if you want. And in my source folder, I'm going to actually create a components folder. But yeah, for now, we have an empty React application. We have an understanding of how Redux works within our application and we can start building some features. Let me actually show you guys some of the tasks that we're going to be working on in the next, in the upcoming videos. In this video, we set up the front end with React and Redux. In the next video, we're going to be working on the page structure for the My Habits page. And as you can see here, I have a bunch of other stuff that I want to be working on in future videos. So we're going to be working on creating uh, the backend with Express, the user login and authentication. Uh, we're going to be working on creating the goals section, the habits section, checking off the days of the week and all these different features. And I'm also brainstorming other features that we can add to the application in the future. So stay tuned because there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this application. And I'm going to be showing you guys how I do it from scratch. If you guys enjoyed this video or you learned anything new from it, then feel free to like and subscribe so you can follow along with more of the development. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.